And look who has arrived. Everyone, stop it. You see her? She is the biggest. She's, I tell you what, Ellie, she's going to be the end of me. Because she will walk up to you like she wants to love you. She just ram you in the kneecaps. Over. She thinks she's a dog, and that's her way of barking, is just ramming you. See? <laughs> what I'm talking about, Ellie? Look. And what? Ellie, you think it's funny? I have already walked around here limping as it is. How you doing, bud? Ready to learn some farm chores? Watch out. Watch out, Ellie. Watch your knees. I'm serious. Watch your knees. Ellie is here because Jamie and I are going. We've been, we're very blessed to have been uh, invited to be presenters at an upcoming conference for video creators. A uh, huge honor. And so we'll be leaving for three days this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We uh, have asked Ellie and Ben to come by and manage and maintain and do all the chores here at uh, Longhorn Lester's. We got Jake and Brian doing all the chores over at I'm a Survivor. Today I'm going to kind of walk Ellie through a dry run of how all the chores look. So when he does come, he'll not only have a reference to go by with this video, but also it may be interesting for some of you guys to find out what are the chores. What do the chores look like every day that you have to do on a daily basis? This is a daily basis. All right. So with no further ado, let's get started. All right. So how do you say it? Without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay. Same so thing. So we always leave the fans on. The fans stay on 24-7. So if you come up, the fans are on. Don't let that bother you. We keep the fans on. They're out of the weather. But the animals, especially the, the furry dogs, need them. They uh, lay in the fans, okay? Uh-huh. Uh, we, we have to keep the air on. Even though the, the shop is not as hot as it is out and about, we like them to have plenty of fans. So don't let it weird you out. The fans are on when you get here. The fans need to be on. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So when you first arrive, the first thing you have to do, the very first thing is walk immediately to the ostriches over here. They have a routine and they like to, they need to cool themselves off every day. So they like to lay in the water for about 30 minutes a day. So I say do this first so that you do your other chores and you can come back and turn the water off. Yeah. So I've already come out and turned the water on. You might not want to get too close with the camera, but I want to show you something. You never have to go inside the pasture. The on-off switch is right here. You turn it sideways, and the water's off. Done. So you turn it to the left to turn it on? You just turn it straight. Oh, to the, the right. Side. Okay. Okay? Okay. So on and off. I have the... You can come closer now. I have this mounted so it can't wobble and move. Sometimes they play with stuff, so they'll start trying to mess with it because it's shiny. But I have it onto the gate and the post so it can't move. You just simply turn it on and turn it off. It needs to run for about 30 minutes, though, and they'll all come up and lay in it during that 30 minutes and just saturate themselves. That'll help cool them off a little bit on these hot days as well. Mm -hmm. Okay? So first thing you do over here is make sure you take care of the waters. They need to have water on them, number one. After you get that done, you can walk over and fill all the waters. I've designed it to where you never have to go inside any pasture if you don't want to. I have some fire ants, so watch out for them. Oh my goodness. I also have some fire ant killer I'll bring over here in a few minutes, so I'll take care of that. All right, this heavy duty water hose is always on, but it has a valve, uh, the on and off nozzle, so you don't have to go inside the pasture. Uh -huh. If you have to, for some reason, see that it's sprung the leak or whatever, obviously there's the on off controls right over there, right there beside that tree. But I know that I would rather no one be in the pasture while we're not here by fear of leaving one of them open. So you just simply do your nozzle and you can fill your water. You can also spray the ostriches if you want to. They love to be sprayed down like the alpaca and just uh, get filled up. You do not have to empty and change the water. I'm gonna make sure that before we leave, I will empty it, bleach it, so it'll be nice and clean when you get here. You just gotta keep it full. Okay. Remember, it's kind of a high water trough. So even though the babies can put their head inside, you can't let it get too low or they, they won't be able to reach it. Yeah. And the scary thing about this pasture, it's the only one with no natural access to, or na access to natural water source. So if they don't have water, they die. So this is very important we get water in this pasture. Do you remember back at the other property, uh, I always told you about that one pasture that had no natural water source. Mm -hmm. The one where Tex and Carl were always at. Yeah. And so everyone else has ponds for emergency, but of course we want our babies to have clean, fresh water. So make sure this is full. It might get a little bit of leaves and stuff in it if the wind blows, things fall out of the tree, but don't worry about that. You don't gotta go in if you don't want to and uh, just make sure it stays nice and full. Okay. I turn right around over here and I have the littles. I've already done waters today. 
So their water troughs are right here. They drink very little water. They usually get water off the creek, but just make sure their waters are full also. You can just stand here and fill them up. And just uh, whenever you're done filling them up, please make sure this is pulled over on this side. Since I leave it on, the animals come by and bite on it and drag it around. And if they just drag it, they end up turning it on accidentally. <laughs> I have shown it before and had the water running accidentally across the pasture. Uh -huh. So I leave it over on this side where it's out of the way. Nothing can get to it. So we keep the dog food inside of here. Uh, I don't just allow them to move, to move around. So I pull the dog food out and I pretty much fill up this green bucket. If we're out of food by the time that uh, Friday comes around, then I'll make sure we have another fresh bag for you. Just make sure you put the bag back inside here and close that door because they'll all eat it. Okay? Millie. All right, so we walk over here. We have two food buckets over here, two food bowls that we fill to the top. Hey, settle down. I may have poured a little bit too much and they'll end up picking and choosing through those and they'll be completely fine. Uh, that feeds three dogs, I'm sorry, four dogs and a goat. <laughs> because she does eat dog food, believe it or not. She even eats the dog food. I don't well. want her to eat dog food, but I told you, Ellie, she thinks she's a dog. <laughs> so make sure those are all the way full and even heaping, okay? Okay. All right, and then here's their dog food, their dog water. I have a hose, stay right where you're at. I have a hose. Tilly loves my dad. <laughs> Hose that we fill up the water. If it's dirty, you might want to empty it out first, okay? Uh huh. Just now a little bit. So, of course, everyone knows how you feed and water a dog. It's not that big of a deal. Just for your reference, you'll remember what order we do everything in. Yep. We feed the cats on top of the table here. We normally fill up both of those little food bowls. Inside here, we have cans of cat food. Oh my goodness. I know, it's crazy. So, don't forget, there's a lot of cats here. Yeah. And cats are not going to gorge themselves and take everything. So it's okay to go ahead and open three cans and you can choose which ones. Um, you want to go ahead and do this, this, and give me a choice. I'll hear it. Purple. Again. Purple. All right, fine. We're going to go over and open three cans of food. The kittens and the big cats all will gather around at some point and they will eat. Can the, kid, can the kitties jump on the table yet? Yes, sir. What we do is we leave one of the chairs opened up a little bit to make sure the kids can get up here. So we have three different kinds of food. Ellie, just make sure you do not leave the cans of food on the edge because you guess what will happen if you leave it right there? The dogs will get the it. The dogs will get it. Uh -huh. so we just kind of put things in the middle. Always throw these away. We uh, have the dogs that sometimes found them and begin to chew on them and that could cut them. Yeah. So always take these and throw them away. Uh huh. All right, so that's how you feed our cats. And uh, so three cans and fill up both of the little bowls. There's a, uh, how many, there's three kittens and there's three adults, four adults. Yeah, I, I was going to say avalanche, so seven cats, wow. Uh-oh. Oh, uh -oh. oh no. <laughs> they're getting to, they're, that's the first time I've seen that, Ellie. <laughs> okay, change the plans. We're going to move these to a different location. Look, Ellie. <laughs> I'll slide them back onto the back side of this shelving of, of this counter. Okay. All right. All right. I promise you the cats will find them. I've never seen her do that. You're naughty. She's probably finally big enough to. She's already bigger than Ritzy. That's crazy. <laughs> Look, that's okay. Yeah. They will find them. You don't uh -huh. have to call them. They will find them. I okay. promise you. All right. Hopefully the dogs are not going to be able to get up there. But uh, here's the trash can. So let me make sure you get one in the trash, please. All right. So we got a barrel full of big food. When you get done with the two red buckets, we're going to put these in the back side of the Argo. And today I'm letting you drive, Ellie. I'm letting you drive. All right. So find your spot. Look at here. I want you to notice something. Uh, we do have some green hay. You will only use this once out of the two days. I don't think you can use it Friday or Saturday, but uh, they cannot have green hay every day. It's too rich for their bodies, too rich for their systems. So if you want to use it up on Friday, that's fine. Or if not, use it on Saturday. But uh, there'll be half a bale of green hay in here that you will use mm -hmm. on one of those two days, okay? Okay. But don't feed them green hay both days in a row. Okay. Why not? Because it's too rich for their mess immune up their system. Good. All right, let's go. All right, so the safer, the way that I do it normally is put the food into these troughs. But I don't want you putting food in the troughs because sometimes they all come running and they get pretty scary. Go on that hill over there. We got some water in the pond finally. Yeah, let's go. Go up to where you find some good green grass. 
All right. So now we got a few minutes before they get here. If you hurry, this will be easier. More like one minute. Boy. Well, if you hurry, you can't just sit there. Uh, so we got, so make sure you pour at least 10 piles. You got, so five from each bucket, five from each bucket. They gotta be spread out nice and spread, Ellie. Nice and spread. Now that, eh, that's too close. They're gonna fight. Oh no, Ellie, look, they don't get it. What? They're like, why are you feeding us on the hill? Ellie, I'd rather you go further apart than this because they, they will fight each other over them. So spread them nice and wide. Ah! Come on. Come on. We're going to pour 10 piles out, Ellie. It's five and five from each bucket. So they have plenty of chances to move around. They are very confused right now, Ellie. They are so confused. Uh, you guys know that um, they can get a little bit rowdy. Those horns can start swinging. All right, Ellie, got get that other one and come over here on this side somewhere. Or somewhere down the hillside straight ahead of you somewhere. It doesn't matter where. Here they come, Ellie. Here comes the stampede. I was hoping you could avoid. Where are you going? I did my I did six actually, so I did my Dude, own. you got another bucket to pour. Maybe I should I'll drive around and do it. Ellie. Son, they're not gonna they're not gonna get it. They're gonna be confused. And we have to hurry because they need to eat now. Come on, get out. They're not after you. They they just want the food. That's why I told you to spread them out. Let's go down that hill. Right now. Ellie, Ellie Morrow, these cows do not want to mess with you. They want to eat. They just want to eat. Here, over here. Follow me. The bee that stung you. He don't want to sting you. Then he stung you. Here, exactly. here in the grass. Look, poor Gracie. All right, now walk around over here a little bit. Oh, That's good. You're okay. They don't want you. What happened that one time in that video we were making and I said if that horse gets too close, what do you do? I don't, I don't even know what you're I said drop the bucket and run. Remember that? Yeah. If the horse gets too close, drop the bucket and run. Same thing with these cows. Uh, over here on this hill. Do not put it in the dirt. We don't feed in the dirt ever. Pour it all out right there on that grass. There you go. All right. Okay, what's so hard about that? Well, nothing right now because they... They don't want you, son. I know, but... They want the food. They're, they're clumsy and reckless. Like. That's why I told you to spread it way out. If you could have poured the first one way over there, they, they wouldn't even be close to us. You're the one that poured it right beside us. So think about that for next time when you're here by yourself. If you don't want them near you, then start pouring somewhere else and then, then walk towards you. You know what I'm saying? And they'll start stopping at the first piles of feed. But uh, the thing is, why did, why did we pour 10, even though we don't have 10 animals here? Just so there's more than enough so they don't fight for the same ones. There you go, because there will be some that will eat faster than others. And uh, you don't want any animals having to fight. It's, it's natural that they're going to sometimes share. So they're sharing right now, which means there's even extra piles available. But uh, the thing is, you don't want them get, being mean to each other and having to fight. So watch the dominoes start to fall. <laughs> Do you see the dominoes falling? Yeah. What just happened right there? The biggest one knocked over a little one, and a little one pushed over the next little, the smallest one. Yeah, but look where the smallest one went, though, Ellie. Back to a pretty big one. No, to her own pile. That's why you have extra piles out there. Uh -huh. Because if we didn't have extra piles, then guess what? That one right there wouldn't be able to eat. So if you have extra piles, now they all can eat, even if they get ran off. And watch, in just a second over here, it'll happen again. The dominoes will start to fall, but look, even the baby will have another one to go to. You see that? Mm -hmm. So you really got to always be aware. Here comes Big Domino. <laughs> Watch Big Domino. Watch the next Domino. Are you watching this, Ellie? Yes. I love this and I also hate it. Watch, Ellie. The dominoes are falling like crazy. Now they're come crashing down, Ellie. Dominoes are crashing down. <laughs> I love these guys, Ellie. And they don't realize that you have more food over here. Why can't they share it like this? Yeah, I know. They're not like that. So, hey, here's an idea, son. Instead of spreading it where they may not be able to find it and causing them all to end up getting into these little tiffs with each other, why don't when you uh, put the feet out next time, you put it in a long straight line. So you can park here if you want to and then take your first bucket and kind of like run down the hill and put your five coming up towards you and then put your next five so they can all kind of stay in a long line. So when they start moving each other down, it'll be easy to find uh, the food. Okay, uh, all right, so pause here for a second. All right, so as you can see, go ahead and turn it off so we can talk. 
All right, so as you can see, your dad already beat you to the water today. The water's nice and full. We're not worried about doing water today. But if you'll hop off, I want to show you where my water on off valve is at. Uh, why do you always follow me? What do you mean? Why don't you get off on your side? I didn't know it'd be shorter and all that. <laughs> all right, so I don't have a water hose. The water shoots right out into there. It's nice and full right now. It's clean. I'll make sure it'll be clean today that you get over here. So you don't have to worry about cleaning it. Okay. Just turning it on is over here, son. I have an on-off valve, and you may not have to. I'll fill it up that morning, and it may not need to be returned on. See this over here? Uh -huh. Just turn it straight, and the water has come on. You can watch over there until it fills up, and then watch here. It turns right back the way it came, okay? Uh -huh. And that's how the water turns on and off. Easy enough? Yes. Okay. Okay, this is kind of interesting, LA. Now, the bigger ones can eat from over this side of the fence, so it's real easy. You can just take it and just, you don't have to fill them all the way to the top, just spread some around the top, like so. See what I'm doing? Yep. Now, a lot of times they'll share with each other. You don't have to fill them all the way up, because they may not even hold that much. So, just get some in each one of them. Look at the goats going crazy, they're so jealous. <laughs> now, once you've gone through about half of your bucket, we have to remember that the little ones can't reach over the fence, okay? Yeah. So, I'm gonna take these over here, and feed them on the other side. I don't want to put my hand over where Carl's at because he'll sometimes snip at me. So look what I'm gonna do. This is for the babies, all right? Yep. I'm gonna fill up at least three of them for the little ones. And when I say fill them up, I'm not gonna fill them all the way up. See how little right now are so confused. They're like, hey, hello. Do the goats normally go first? Uh, no. The goats just are always little beggars, really. The goats are just little beggars. <laughs> now look what I'm doing over here so I can carry them all at the same time. See this? Yes. All right, walk with me. Watch you. Now, this is a little bit scary for some people, but I put my hand through and grab it, and I come down a little bit, and it'll hook onto the fence. See how it hooks to the fence? Uh-huh. Look at this. See this? Here, let me see if I can do it. Okay. Just like that, and come down about two wide. Yeah, there you go. And then fine, there you go. Hey, not too bad, right? Nope. You got one more to go. Is that me or you? That is my phone. Okay. I'll answer it as soon as I'm finished you putting this next. Yeah, spread them out a little bit more. Spread it a little bit more. It literally, I couldn't see it behind the... Right. And that's about how low you have to go. Come on, Tat. Oh my God, Ellie, Tat's reaching. Tat is reaching. Ellie, Tat is reaching his head over like a big bird. Oh gosh, Tat, Ellie, Tat reached over the entire fence. He's finally getting big enough. I figured he would, I figured he oh would get there. My gosh. I figured he'd get there before. Juan, to go eat with the big birds, Ellie, now we have a problem here. What do you think the problem might be? What, do you, what can you see as a, as a problem here? Uh, the big ones eating out of the mm -hmm. little ones and they're still big food because the, the bigs can reach their own food the littles can't reach the big So food. let's go ahead and do, a, do me a favor. Go ahead and bring one more of those big ones over and we'll set it over. We don't have to come over here. We can set it over anywhere. Now that the big birds are over on this side, I just don't want it to be where the babies are still hungry, you know? Yeah. Because Carl and Wanda ate all of their food. <laughs> so take one no one's eating out of and we'll just reach it over. I don't care where you reach it over at. Just watch out for the fire ants here behind you. There you go. That way the babies will at least be able to find some. Yeah, I don't know why now. Yeah, they'll all get some that way. You know, I just thought about something, Ellie. Uh, you don't have to do it this way, but I think that what I'm going to do whenever I come back to start feeding this way is make sure I put all of them about, about that height. Because it seems like Carl and whoever that is beside him, Wanda, are completely content to eat low with the babies. They don't really care to eat high like this over here. See it? They probably don't care either. They're just there because food's there. They were, <laughs> they had no They'll eat low or high. They don't care? Yeah. Well, what we don't want to do is have the babies still be hungry when, when all the food is gone because they can't reach over the fence. But I was shocked that Tat did that. Hey, here's an idea. If we turn this around this way... I wonder if uh, even the other babies can reach it now. 
Yeah, they grow pretty fast, so I was yeah. say it won't be long till this is Oh, he was stretched out. Early. I was shocked he was stretched that far. It won't be long till this doesn't matter anymore anyways. I'm going to kill those, Ellie, right now. I'm going to get some stuff and kill those before we leave. They're All right. almost extinct, though. Fire ants? I saw this YouTube video, and it's kind of like how there's a world war going on in the ants, in the ants world. Yeah. There's this uh, Argentine ant that has taken over the entire world, but there's one more region where the fire ant is still prominent, and that one region is uh, southeast United States, which is where we are. Oh, I had no idea. Is this Argentine ant bad? It's funny. The Argentine ant is like 10 times smaller than the fire ant, but they outnumber them by like billions, and so they literally just smother them based on sheer outnumbering them. That's interesting. All right, so now we have done everything except for one thing. The goats. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, Ellie, do not let them make you feel sorry for them. They're, they're trying to make you look like they're, like they're starving. Look at their faces. A goat has a unique ability to look into your eyes and make you feel so sorry for it. <laughs> they're like, I thought they're starving over here. But I promise you, they've been out in them woods all morning foraging and getting all kinds of God's goodness. No one here is starving. You fed goats hundreds of times, so you don't need me to help you on this over here. You can tell by looking at them, they're fine. <laughs> they're, they're absolutely fine. But whenever you do feed, if you'll just make sure you put plenty of piles so they don't have to fight each other, and we'll pour it all out in that grass, okay? Mm -hmm. We're not gonna put it into troughs, so put it into that grass so they can eat off the grass. Easy enough? Yep. Look at them, how mean they can be. All right, Ali is about to do the job that I hate the most. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I love the goats. Everyone that has goats know how much you love them, but they're also the most annoying animal on God's earth. Why can't they all eat dog food like Tilly? <laughs> oh, we do feed Tilly her own formula, Ellie. That's not all she gets is dog food. She, well, I'll show you that later. All right, Ellie, this is all on you. Good luck. Watch out for your knees. I want you to, to not be limping around at the age of 50 like your dad. You opened the wrong one, son. I was going to open both of them because I thought it. Good luck. Mm -hmm. What are you doing, son? Son, what are you doing? Well, what are you going to do about these three? They'll come back. Uh, Ellie, yeah. you have goats out. I can't see you, son. Are you okay? I can't see you. <laughs> Watch your kneecap, son. <laughs> Poor Elfie. All right, no, pickle, little pickles. All right. Okay. Any questions that I can answer to you, for you now? No, good. What do you think would be the hardest job? This. No. The way you were scared of those bigs up there. Well, yeah, I'm scared of them, but I'll probably, <laughs> I'll probably just try to, like you said, kind of do it quickly before they get there. And then... I saw a video that you posted where you showed a mini horse. And you said, oh, that'd be a great animal for you because it's a, it's a big horse's name, but it's in a tiny body. Yes. So you like mini horses, mini cows, mini... Things. I just, I'm just afraid of getting hurt, and so little animals don't have the potential to. <laughs> the hell they don't. To seriously injure you. Let me put it that way. Okay, yeah. I yeah. walk around with a limp because of Ringo, son. Ringo. I don't limp because of Tex or Carl. I limp because of Ringo. Ringo. <laughs> I guess it's different for Baby, you. Baby, go eat, love. We, we Stop all... trying to act, make us look, feel sorry for you. We all have our worst enemies, and mine are the ones that their foot got this close to my head for no reason at all mm, the horse i remember that day yeah all right Dixie. let's go feed tilly and we're done okay.